You're watching The Breakfast Club. I, I don't want nobody kicking my balls all over the place. <laughs> well, if you just joined us, uh, Ronald Reagan was talking about getting his balls kicked. Yes. <laughs> you might want to put that in some context. <laughs> if you hear this, no. you your balls. Yeah, no, your balls. No, because she was talking about she's going to have a dominatrix on her, her little dirty show. Lip service. Lip service, dirty yeah. Show. That's a nasty little show. Marlon Wayans uh, was on Lip on service. On Giant Giant Talk. And so, uh, <laughs> so she's talking about having a dominatrix. I, I, I had some questions because I, I don't know about somebody like kicking me and my gonads like but that's and me not being like ooh yeah but I see the videos and like the white guys like oh mash my mash my <laughs> cock around and I'm just like yo <laughs> if you step on my meat I'm gonna be mad like I'm not paying you like, but experience. you might like it though you might you be like dang I, now I see why they answer this, this but there's certain things I, I'm never gonna know about like yeah. people go oh you know what guys have a G spot in their ass yes they do and I'm like you and know what that's sad I'm month. never gonna feel that next month is annual awareness <laughs> month I'm I'm never gonna see. I'm never gonna feel that. Well, I'll tell you this. I've had one experience where I had a dominatrix on the show once, and she bought. I, you, I had something in my ass. Let's, no, no, no. let's talk, Angie. She bought a guy with let's her. Talk. She bought a. Well, they call them slaves. She bought a slave with her, right? There's a white guy, and his dick was like the smallest thing I've ever seen. And <laughs> so he got little naked in the studio. With little, little, little dick. Funny. When your dick is little, you don't care. But she kept. You don't care. She when they call you slave, him. I am a slave. I was born with a little dick. <laughs> Beat me. I'm worthless. Yes, you are. She you took a stick and she was just hitting his balls with the stick and he was screaming. And then she tied it in a no his balls in a noose. And then it got all swollen and like nasty looking. All but this he on loved air? it and he paid for it. Yeah, I actually have video look at, if you ever look at look at all of look at look at the face right here. Mm -hmm. All no uh, no, nah, nah, that's not for and black people. And she said she got into it because look, a guy hired her. Niggas been spit through enough. Him. We been through enough. That's white privilege. They they need that type of <laughs> shit. We been through enough. I don't want to ever see a whip. I don't want to see a chain. I don't want to be beaten. I don't want my my, my my I had ancestors in nooses. Why am I gonna put my dick in a noose? That's yeah. a good point. The white people that went through slavery, they probably wouldn't be in all yeah. that. Yeah, like, no, nah, don't touch. Don't you touch. Touch me. <laughs> it's men that are used to being like in power, so they like to not have any power and be like abused, I guess. Yeah, I, I like just light some candles, like make some slow <laughs> love, and every now and then get get on all fours. This How might be that? a good episode uh, for Marlon. This sounds like, <laughs> 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 sound like the Me Too episode of Marlon. The Time's Up episode of Marlon. This sounds like the Me You guys haven't explored that yet on the show. <laughs> that me and her are exploring that, but we ain't having sex on the show. I know, that, but this is not having sex because the domination doesn't have sex. So you get, what that's do they do? So what are they paying for? Just to be beat? No, actually part of them being able to be a dominatrix is they don't have sex with their servants. So, I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, lost, you lost me right yeah, there. Yeah, they just do other you things. Kick, like kick my, you don't kick my balls around. <laughs> Ain't going to give me nothing? Like, you think you could have some after that? Yep. Yeah, I, I take all that <laughs> pain for that. Two times that up yeah. <laughs> well, I hear them coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though, because... <laughs> <laughs> on the show, Marlon, you guys don't have a relationship, but then you guys are in counseling to cu couples. Counseling yeah, because we want to get a, get along. Right. You know, I, I, it's funny because like um, I, I think it's important to get along. Like me and Ange actually get along better now because mm -hmm. we we ain't doing it. Is this show? And, and every you? now and then I'd be like, no, we because we're always good. I use episodes that happen in our real life and I put it on the show, and I'd be like, and every now and then like we get to this point where I'm just like, I love you, and she's like, I love you, and I'm like. You want to do it? And she goes, maybe. And I go, let me ask you, are you going to act crazy afterwards? She said, yup. I said, yeah, you hold that pussy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's don't, I don't like the crazy ants. I like the happy ants. But I guess without sex, though, then you got to focus on the other things in life, like the, actually conversation. The and friendship, friendship, the conversation, yeah. the kids. Like, we don't have these arguments about the kids. It's just like we go, what's the solution? When you're doing it, you're the problem. When you're not doing it, the problem is the problem, and then we together work toward the solution. I'm not that guy. Like sometimes when you're with a girl and you're in a relationship, you, when you become her boyfriend, you're that guy. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that I've been through in my life, <laughs> you're the guy that's gonna heal it. All my daddy issues, you're that guy. All my brother issues, you're that guy. My first love, you're that guy. The minute you stop becoming that guy and you're just her friend, 
you see a woman from a different angle and it's just like, yo, it's beautiful and you can't wait for another nigga to go be with her so he could be that guy. You say mm. that, but then when she was dating, you didn't have an issue. Oh, I'm never going to be happy about that. That's black ego now. <laughs> <laughs> let's be real about this. I can't this. wait, you know, I don't want to know about it. Let's be real about that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just think at the end of the day, you know, we have to heal ourselves and we can't put it on other people to heal you. You know, that guy can only be healed by you becoming that girl. Everything you've been through in your life is supposed to happen for you to resolve it, for you to be a better person. And you know, when I when you forgive, it makes you great. Yeah, people don't even be realizing they damaged though, so they can't even go heal themselves. We are all damaged. 100%. And you know why? Cuz damaged people have raised damaged 100%. people. And we all got our issues and you know nobody perfect, but you know therapy is good. I do Prayer it. is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I do that too. Isn't therapy awesome? Hell yeah. Great. Because you really get to sit there and not the therapist don't help you. <laughs> he just goes, so what do you think about you? That's it. The motherfucker, <laughs> I paid you two fifty dollars hour. I want the cliff notes to my pain. <laughs> but then what happens is you talk enough and you start going, oh. You figure it out. That's why I, I'm like this with women. That's why I like having my own space because I grew up in a house with 10 kids and I don't want a roommate. It's not about me not wanting somebody. You know, I just want my own space. Mm-hmm. So it has nothing even to do with another woman. It's the fact that I grew up in this little house with 10 people telling me what to do and I just like to live alone. I live alone in my 7,000 square foot house and I just walk around sometime in that little bummy place and I just go to every room and I just go, ah, it's nice to be alone. <laughs> like, ain't nothing to rob at my house. I'm sorry. I ain't like Takashi and these dudes. Hey, you come to my house. Which, you want an Apple Watch? <laughs> Take it. They, you, you may want to turn the location off, sir. I, I ain't got nothing. But see, you different, though. They'll hold you for ransom and call Keenan, call Damon, call and, Sean. And, and they'll, they'll get the this. Mo- they'll go, <laughs> Damon will go, well, that's, I'll, that's one less nigga I got to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Keenan, they don't want to make call. Keenan, Keenan, the action star. Keenan coming, looking like low down, dirty shit. Put my fucking brother down before I drop you like a pack of cools. Why are you always working, man? Because uh, he loves yeah, you, you literally it. was just because here promoting I, the, the TV show. Just here. It was season a moment, two of Marvel just from it. Before that, you was just here promoting the I, I'm movie. trying to get this fourth seat on the Breakfast Club. Now, now no, you're back uh, in the guidelines this weekend. <laughs> I'm always working. I'm at Caroline's. I'm I'm always working because I'm tr- I'm trying to get better. But why right. Caroline's? You know, you could sell out damn near any place. Why a small venue? Because small venues prepare you for when you're gonna do the big venues. Mm-hmm. I'm preparing for something greater, and by me doing the smaller rooms. Every time you do it, you get better. Every mm-hmm. time you 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 hone your craft, because one day when you're playing the garden, you have to make the garden feel as intimate as Caroline's. Mm. So you do your reps. I'm not in a rush to go, I'm going to blow up. I'm in a rush to get better. So every time I hit a stage, which is literally every weekend, I get better. And then one day I'll be at that place where – I'm selling out the big places, and that's where I'm supposed to be. But until then, I just got to do the work. And I don't know where God's going to take me, but all I know is if I do the work, I'm prepared for whatever moment comes my way. People ask, why you work so hard? Because I'm preparing for something greater. I, I'm, I'm preparing for superstardom. So I don't sleep on the weekends because I'm working on the weekends. Because then when I'm doing a movie and I'm, I got to do a, 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 a play like an a, a amphitheater somewhere or a weekend where I'm playing like a, a stadium and another the stadium and I got to go back to the movie set and work I, I that's what I do anyway I'm glad to do one show or two shows at these stadiums because instead of doing nine shows during the weekend and then going back to work it makes it easier when you just do the work do you feel like you're good when stand up yeah yeah I, I feel like the matrix is happening I see it because now I'm starting to get more personal I, I look I got the skill set mm-hmm. I'm physical I'm funny. I got a good point of view. Um, I'm I'm fearless. Um, and now I'm starting to talk about real things like my life, mm-hmm. like my pain, like my family. like And those are the layers of the onion. So I feel like I'm getting better. The first special I feel like I did because I just want people to go, yo, this is where I'm at after doing seven years of stand-up. Mm-hmm. I'm funny. I know how to tell a joke. Here's what's happening in the world. I'm going to talk about it. And then I left it on talking about my kids which was like yo and that's personal Mm -hmm. and now I'm picking up where that left off and I'm getting more personal and then after this one I get more personal and more personal and at the point where I can't find no more funny I start from scratch and I go what's funny about the world and then rediscover myself are you fearful of people taping your show and then 
putting it online and you can't. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So how, do, how, do you get, how do you get around that? If I if my career is going to blow up, please let it be on some stupid shit that I release myself. <laughs> it's nothing worse than when you're in a comedy club. And when I'm in a comedy club, and especially sometimes they're not even fucking paying you. You're just going up and you're working like, yo, I'm just going to... This thought was in my head. It's not refined. Right. Everything I say isn't going to be politically correct mm -hmm. straight out my mouth. Sometimes I just, here's what I feel about this. And nowadays, you can't feel a certain type of way because then your job is gone. Mm -hmm. Like, funny is going to go away. Movies, theaters, and funny are two things that are going to go away if we don't do something now to stop it. you got to be able to have a point of view. I'm going to say up front, listen, I'm going to say some stupid shit sooner or later. I'm going to say it, and I have to say stupid shit. If I don't say stupid shit, I can't get to the good shit. Mm -hmm. So if people want to you know, crucify me for a stupid thought that I had that was unrefined, that's cool, because I'm going to make that, 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 that worst joke my best joke, and I'm going to get a stand ovation on that joke, and that's the joke I'm going to be known for, because you judgmental assholes try to make me feel like I can't go into this dark cave and go in there and get jokes. That's my job, to go in dark places. I got to talk about dark things. I got to talk about Me Too's. I got to mm -hmm. talk about um, the, the things that everybody goes, there's nothing funny in that. <clears throat> Sure there is. This funny and everything. Religion. You know, you go to stand-up comedy and you see comedians talking about how they were molested as a child. And here's what's funny about it. And you go, yo, that's amazing mm -hmm. that you had the, the balls to go up and talk about that experience. And there's so many people out there that are going through that or have been through that, that because you had the, 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 uh, the balls or the courage to go explore yourself an experience or a topic, that you're making other people laugh and heal from their experience. So I think as comedians, you know, the world can say what they want, but freedom of speech is something that we all have and we should apply. And I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm going to try my best not to say no stupid shit. Right. Roseanne got me thinking, boy. Yeah, I was like, does. ooh. <laughs> they canceled her like she was a black show. I said, oh, ooh. And now before I tweet, I go, would Roseanne say something like, like this? Man, I'm gonna tell you something. What would Roseanne do? You know, that's do? what you do. Delete your Twitter. <laughs> really? Just clean it out, man. I, I just don't go in no more. Maybe no, I'm, I'm talking about the old stuff. You know, it's the they, they using the old stuff against you nowadays. How you use old stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Because they don't they don't expect people to grow. It's and a evolve. new world order. It's like, yeah. look, people do grow and evolve. You can't get mad at me about something I said back then. First, it, it's out of context. Mm -hmm. You don't know the situation. And then with comedians, you really don't know because we. When you like say something to a comedian, it's like something clicks and just goes, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill your whole family. I'm 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 gonna <laughs> I gotta bomb your whole tribe. I gotta hit your whole race in order just to get you out that cave. It's like that's what happens when you're on a stage, like and somebody or even when you're on Twitter and someone says something, you like you said what? You ain't thinking. You just thinking I'm gonna destroy this person. You're not thinking about the ramifications of that's what's real. gonna happen due to what's happening in society right, right now. I don't like the world we're living in. Me neither. I don't and like and it. culture was very different ten years ago. So the way we used to talk, the language we used to use, it was totally different. It was acceptable. But now, ten years later, they'll pull it up and say, "See, look what he is." What are we supposed to say now? Like, what entertainment is changing? Nobody. I mean, somebody got to be brave enough to just go, "Yo, fuck it, fuck it, man." We got to talk. We got to be. And if people are going to, you know, sometimes it's like, yo, maybe, you know, you're not going to be on a network. But sometimes that's freedom to go, I got to say what I got to say. That's but now real. you are on a network, so I'm sure you're like, okay, I, like you said, I can't say nothing. Um, I can't when I'm on, when I'm, especially when I'm uh, representing the show. Mm -hmm. But when I'm on stage right. and I'm on my platform speaking about my truth. Man, listen. You say I, that, but then as soon as you say something they don't like, then guess who they gonna go after? I, NBC. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but if, and if those shows, and if 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 that's, if God has that in your plans for you to go in that direction, then you have to go that direction that's and real. go. Well, I gotta find my truth this way. Sometimes a closed door opens up a thousand others, and that's sometimes real. you know you being a martyr in some kind of way to stand for something. If you if you fall for every if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. That's real. And that, as, especially in what we all do, we have to have a voice. We have to be a voice to the people. There's people that's listening because they want to hear real shit. Right. Nobody wants to hear homogenized bullshit and washed out thoughts and theories. The reason why people like this show is because there's three real people coming from three different points of view. Even, you know, if the day you become a nice guy, 
Nigga, it's a rap. <laughs> the day you ain't trying to figure out, let me, how do I get on this nigga's nerve? Let me ask the questions that, that he's uncomfortable answering. That's the day that people go, yo, Charlemagne changed. That's real. And you just got to keep it real. And if, if, and, and if I'm going uh -huh. to fall on the sword that God gave me, I'm ex you know, I have a certain sword, and that's, that's my gift of seeing the world a certain way and talking about it and being free and being silly and not giving a fuck and it's okay if i have to start my own little network and do my <laughs> own little thing i got my social media i'll just be the funny ig youtube dude if i'm not good enough or right enough for a network i do r-rated movies i've been doing r-rated movies sometimes i do pg-13 but if i'm gonna do a rated r movie and somebody's gonna tell me well that joke is gonna offend well then listen we have to talk about what kind of movie we're doing here because maybe I don't want to do that movie. Mm -hmm. Now I, I like what you said about um. Okay. No, no. I was I was gonna say say you know when you talked about his family before and how do your family stay so strong because you know you look at Hollywood and you see so much drug use and, and Demi Lovato with, with with her ODN and you see that a lot with I people using so drugs. Bad, baby, right. I feel bad for her. How do your family stay away from the drug use like so strong? Because I mean I, I I hear that that, that they have coke parties and this type of parties and. We've never heard none of the Wayans Well, here's the thing. That. A few things. One is we grew up in a neighborhood that drugs was there. We grew up right there in the projects on 16th Street and 9th Avenue. So you saw all the crackheads. I seen the crackheads. Yeah. I, we never looked at crackheads and was like, man. I want to be that way. I, I want to be like that. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I want to I get ashy. I want to get yellow eyes. And I, and, and I want to just suck weird penises for crack money. That's what I want to do. That's not, I Marlon never looked at a crackhead and said, that's what I want to do. Marlon Wayne shames crackheads on the breakfast club. <laughs> <laughs> offense out. Everybody's offended. Uh, he said what? <laughs> <laughs> that bullshit. Not for five dollars. I'm at least six dollars to suck your... Um, so, <laughs> you feeling it, huh? You Y'all feeling the clamp of all this society uh, telling you, you can't it. say that, you can't say this. I hate it. Be be fearless. Period. Be fearless. You gotta be. People tune in to you for a reason. You are you for a reason. You gotta be authentic and let the world come to you. As it changes, you can shift, but don't don't and you can you can mature. And but be you responsible. Don't change. Yes. And you be responsible. Yes. But at core, you gotta say what the hell you're saying. And the other thing is, my dad wasn't into drugs, my mom wasn't into drugs. We were loved by both my parents. They stayed around. We had great big brothers and great examples in Keenan, great examples in Damon. And that's what kept us out of trouble because I looked at Keenan and Damon, my mom and my dad, and I said, I wanna be like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important what you were saying about how we do, um, we should be able to say whatever we want to say, be authentic, but at the same time, be accountable. So if you do say something, like you said, that's stupid, to be accountable for Stand by it and right. go, yo, I meant this, but don't be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, don't, don't backtrack. Don't rock a Trump. Yeah. Like, I, I said wouldn't, not would. <laughs> <laughs> what? And now you're the president. Yeah, man. <laughs> because, because what you said was real. It's like we're in a new territory, so we're discussing new things and exploring new things, and sometimes when you're having those conversations, they will be unrefined. Yes. And, and you can do my thoughts. And that's okay. Yeah. Listen, it prior has unrefined material. Every comedian has unrefined material. It starts out this way. My brother Damon stopped doing comedy because of the way society is. And that mm. to me, that that breaks mm. my heart that mm. a comedian has to feel that way. Right. It's like, yo, we gotta be able to go up there and express. And you know what hurt hurts us? Social media, and as much Hell as I yeah. love social media, it hurts us. You know why? Because the experience now, you got all these bots out there that are manipulating people. These aren't even real accounts. They go and they, they here's their agenda, yep. and they go in there and they, oh, we're going to throw this out there, and we're going to throw this out. We're going to get you fired here because what they're trying to do is silence you. What they're trying to do is 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 shift an agenda, and, and, and it really, and, and it's working. And we got to get off. We have to detach from social media. We got to go back to the way it used to be when you, you know, or you go to a, a show and not everybody taping your show. Right. I, I don't pull my phone out when the shows come because I want I want I want the experience. Right. I'm, I hate when people when people pull out their phone in my show. I I, I damn near want to stop. How do and you that's why it's great. A lot of comedians are making people put their phones away Yo, and put them in them pouches. Uh, you got to put them pouch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got thrown out of the show for that. Yeah, he did. Kevin Hart show. Threw me out. <laughs> Kevin got him the hell out of there. He threw you out. <laughs> 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 Personally, <laughs> I, was, I knew it was him. Yeah. He didn't give a damn. I was checking <laughs> on my kid. And, and, like, and, and, and when Emmy says something to Kevin. 
<laughs> you on the front? They was like, get him out. I was like, I know Kev. They was like, nah, get out of here. Oh. And when Envy oh. said something to Kev, Kev said, you don't, you don't know how to follow the rules? You know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> throw me right out. Oh. Nah, get out of Kev. Oh. You follow the rules. It was like, I, I mean, I, if, I, if they I, see you get thrown out, everybody knows it's serious. I would have gave you a warning. I'd be like, yo. Envy, you know better. My bad, my bad. But Envy would have got right back on his phone. That's no, the thing. Nah, no, but if it's somebody defiant. like this, you know, but, you know, I get it because <laughs> here's the thing. You don't know what people are going to say and the magic of the moment is important that it's pure. What happened to pure, like, authentic, just shit, man, real talk, like, People ain't doing it no more. I got to think about everything I got to say. Mm -hmm. I, it makes you go, I want to be unemployed just so I can be free. That's real. Now, how do you deal with, you know, when, when you're doing a show and you're saying you're testing out stuff and it doesn't work? Did you see the video of Safari? Not, well, him getting booed yes, and uh, Yeah, yeah, So So he went the wrong way. Wait, was he freestyling that? No, that's his song. No, he song. was rapping his song and they just started booing him. You know, heard him. 100 on 100 on this. Hunting nah, on, but, but you can't be talking about how you, you know, you, yeah, I bang the baddest, bro. It's like, yo, <laughs> especially up in Harlem. I would tell him, yo, what's your set? Nah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you going to Harlem. Nah, 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 they going to feel that nah, song. Nah, Nobody yeah. trying to hear that. <laughs> so, so how did you get out of that if you ever had to get out of that way? You know, you told the joke wasn't too good and, the, you know, you could hear the rumbling like, Keep next moving. joke. Yeah, next joke. Next joke. So and it's, or, <laughs> I'm going, or, oh, all right, let me go deeper. I, I They're listening. So now they're listening. Sometimes you go a little deeper and you make them laugh. You get that every show. Mm. You get it every show. Sometimes you say some stuff and women be like, oh, but then you'll hear the guys laugh. But then you got to go, all right, so women, women's a little offended. Guys are laughing. How do I connect to the women? Let me give their perspective of it. Ha! Gotcha. Like, you know, sometimes you talk about like certain things and it's hot button topics. But when you find a way to make it inclusive to everybody, you can't shame nobody. A, a joke is supposed to make everybody laugh if you can. Some people are going to be offended. If you're offended, walk the hell out my show. I ain't going to be like, hey, don't leave. Bye. I, you're not for me. Right. But, I, but I'm not that guy that sits around just cracking offensive jokes. I'm trying to be funny. Right. So I'm and trying smart. to be relatable. Yeah, and so I'm, and, and and no comedian wants to just offend people. Some comedians brilliant at that. Paul Mooney, one of the funniest comedians ever. So funny. Sat in the back and he would just sit there and he would just bash white people <laughs> and it was so goddamn hilarious and I'm, white people would be laughing like it so yeah. funny but if he didn't do that like he, him and Pryor and those guys you can't be afraid to bomb you can't right. be afraid to create a stage is a is a safe haven it's like that's the Vegas for artists like it's the stage it's like you can't tell me what to put in a painting this is art this is what we do so don't let nobody try and strip you of that man you know and and but you have to be appropriate with your art I know I'm on NBC so I can't go yo I this is great sex scene I want to do on, on my show no <laughs> right. I'm on NBC I, I can't do that I want to do a great sex scene I should go yo I got this other show idea I want to do for for, for Netflix. Netflix right mm -hmm. So gotcha. you know, know, know your it. audience and know, know, <laughs> know the, the the station you're working with. All right. Now I can't help but feel like maybe, maybe, maybe after watching Marlon, you and Angela in real life could get back together. I mean, everybody feel that way. Mom. Does she feel like that when she sees it? No, she. You know, it's <laughs> funny. I I watched that with my kids, and um, the beauty of that show is I, I, my kids. I watched it like th there was an episode uh, of my favorite episode with the. Brisha was dating this guy. It was called Man Code, and she couldn't. Uh, Yvette couldn't. Didn't know he was cheating, and I knew he was cheating, but I couldn't tell she was he was mm -hmm. cheating. And then we had the confrontation, and I watched my son watch me, and my daughter watch me, and their mom watch me, and they were laughing like they didn't know me. Right. And that for me was my favorite part of doing the show was watching the joy that they had. And they might, Angie just go, you so stupid. Like that, well, Angie loves me. Mm -hmm. She just knows that, you know, I don't, I don't want to not love you, so let's not be together. I mm -hmm. get that. I love you too. I love you too much to be with you, and, 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 but I love you for life. And you don't need to worry about like, us being together. It's a, we are together. We're a family. And my kids only know us the way we are. Mm -hmm. So it would be weird for them if me and her just all of a sudden wound up d together. Love. Like, what, mom and dad? <laughs> Do y'all vacation together and stuff? I saw yeah. a little vacation with his ex. Yeah, man. Right. I, I just took Angie for her 50th. I rented a dope house in Punta Mita. I bought all her friends. Mm -hmm. I stayed the weekend. I, we hung out. We drank. We had a great time. And, you know, it was her 50th birthday. And I just said, 
I love you. And I think more people should mm -hmm. do that. Get off your high horse. Because at the end, it's about my family. Right. That's my family. That's not my baby mama. That's not my ex. That That is my family. <laughs> like a sister to me. We had children. My blood and her blood mixed. We will have grandchildren together. We are. We will have uh, uh, generations together. So I love that woman. I'll love her always. And I think every man should. No matter what the situation. I don't care if she cheated. It's going to happen. So what you going to do? Not know your kids? Mm -hmm. right. You stupid. Grow up. Well, Caroline's this weekend. Tonight at 7.30. Yep. Friday at 7.30 and 10. Saturday, 7.30 and 10. And Sunday at 7.30. Get your ticket to Ticketmaster or to Caroline. Marlon works awesome. hard. And, if and, he was a slave, they would have <laughs> gave him a raise. Mm -hmm. And three things Marlon always brings. What's that? Marlon comes to the breakfast club. He's funny. <laughs> funny, uh-huh. He's smart. Smart. And sweaty. <laughs> Every <laughs> single time. <laughs> what <laughs> no. you on? You on a lemon pepper diet? Why are you so skinny? <laughs> 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 you on, he lost all his buff. What you got for modeling? Nah, just leaning out, man. Why? You doodling a lot, dude. He, he started doodling. He ain't doodling for years. He had all his chest and, and he started doodling. It's, it's all still there. I just want to lean out a little bit. That's all. Oh my goodness. All right. It's Marlon Wayans. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's the lemon pepper diet.